You think anybody would go into uh, Hermes or, 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 or Louis Vuitton? Hey, man. You suck, man. You know? Hey, guy. My, 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 my ex-wife is really on my ass, man. I, I really want this Gucci belt, but Jesus, guy. I just... It's just so much, man. I, is there any way you could lower the price down? Because, you know, you wouldn't go into Gucci doing that. You, you, you got too much pride. You know that shit wouldn't work. So why is that important? Well, it shows that people understand and pay for what they want. What I said at the beginning. When a man wants something, he goes for it. When a male wants something, he tries to hustle or steal it. Now, I need you guys to ask yourself a question. As men, simply as men, what happens if we had even 25% of men, not even 25%, not even 25%, 10%. What happens if we had 10% of men performing as if they expected to pay 100% of everything. What happens if we had 10% of men operating with 100% mentality in all things? What would happen? I'm going to answer this question that you timed out. I seen. You're the guy who called in to get a consultation and I told you to book a consultation and you didn't. Here's what I want you to do for me, dude. You called in here on the wrong show and I, I told you what to do. You need help, man. Book a session. I'm not going to answer your questions. Part of your problem is you're very feminine. And you act and acting and continue to ask for shit after you've been told. I'm, I'm using this as a teaching lesson. You've been told what to do, young male. And yet you've not handled yourself like a man. You're still moving like a woman. Feminine energy. You're in the chat room. You follow this channel. Cool. But you specifically raised your hand and said, I need help. And you were in the wrong space. You were trying to get a free lunch. Feminine. I helped you. Pointed you in the right direction. Your job as a man should have been to follow through. But uh, the problem is, as a young male, you are void of masculinity. So you move like a feminine. You're going to continue to meet resistance with masculine men. You get nothing over here. Pay your way. So, perfect lead in. Thank you for doing that, Nate Taylor. I asked the question imagine what happened if we had 10% of men operating in a mindset that they expected and needed to pay 100% of everything. What would happen if we had men doing that? But I'm going to tell you, what happens when we don't, you just have what just happened. When we don't have men operating that way, you get what just happened with that young guy. What happens if you had men expecting that at least 10%? You'd have a leading class. You'd have a business class. You'd have, you'd have actual leaders, power brokers that could deal with any group of men and compete and win. All, all you guys who know good and damn well, you got that fire burning inside of you and you want to be the best you can. Imagine if you know you had it, you know you could look out and see other men like you. What could you do if 10 out of every 100 men were cut from that 100% cloth? Would you like to live in a neighborhood with those men? Would you like your home to be on the block with those guys? Because you know your yard will look a certain way. You know their yard will look a certain way. There'll be no trash in the yard. There'll be no, there'll be no oil stains in the driveway. Imagine what a, what a neighborhood of 100% men look like. Imagine what a neighborhood of 100% young men look like. A bunch of young men on their big wheels or their tricycles seeing a bunch of 100% men, whether they're married or single. Seeing a bunch of 100% men everywhere they go on Saturday. 
coming out of the house on the suit on suit Saturday, on Sunday, getting up and cutting the yard. Imagine a bunch of young men riding bikes, doing whatever, and they see a bunch of men cutting the yard. I see Mr. Bowtie Fragrance guy over there, and you know what? I know my I know my noob hates edging. I know he hates edging. He knows I hate weed eating. I go over and edge his stuff. Fire comes over and weed eats my stuff. I high five his little his little his noob in training. I say hello to his silhouette wife and I say hey to his little baby girls. Really? All you need is ten percent. A bunch of 100% men who say, you know what, regardless of what happened, my mindset is I got to get out there and make it happen. I'm going to tell you right now, women, your money is no good with me. The women I deal with, I don't. you don't bring money with me. I don't care what you do. Pull out your wallet. If, pull out your wallet if you want to. You will get fired doing that shit with me. Yes, I don't play that bullshit. Don't even, don't even, don't even push it forward like you're about to do something. I'll tell you a little story. God damn it. Cause I'm about to get to you ladies. Oh, I'm about to rip y'all up too. In a good way. <clears throat> when you're a man and you have a hundred percent mentality, even when you're starting out, you will find, you will have the, the, the mindset, the work ethic. You will always go for the hard assignment. You'll go the hard way. You'll despise the free lunch, guys. And what it'll do, it, it'll build, it, it builds character. And that is sorely what a lot of us are lacking, especially a lot of us who were raised by Mammy. Mama wanted to keep us safe and she, you know, she loved us, but we needed this. Always despise the free lunch and the easy catch. It's the work, the hunt, the chase that makes the appetite keen. That's why I say show your work. You got to show it. And see, the thing is, men who do work have no problem showing it. That's why their resumes are full. They're not light. When you are 25, you should have a resume. When you're 18, you should have a resume. It should have said what you did from junior high to, to graduation. From 18 to 23, you should have a resume. Let me uh, talk about this part quick before I continue on. <clears throat> I want to tell a little story of my own. So, I love the part talking about always doing the hard work. I remember when I first started college. So, I was in college, I'm chilling, and we had this little place where... Uh, people who didn't live on campus could hang out. And so I would hang out in that room because after a certain time, nobody would ever go in there. Uh, so I remember spending every single night studying, 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 and studying. I didn't do anything else. Should have worked out more, but I didn't. I did that next semester. But my first semester, that's all I did. Made great grades. Second semester comes along. And I decided to do this whole work-life balance. And I started to hang out with people more. My grades dropped. And then my third semester, I, I, I found a way to do both. I found a way to live kind of a life, but also work hard. I want to say this. What I learned in the semester I worked hard and the semester I didn't work hard it's so much easier to relax when you work hard. Because when you're slacking, it makes everything hard. That's why the third semester, I was able to put it together. I knew where to work hard. And it allowed me to relax. Because I would study so much, I get so far ahead on homework or get so far ahead of, on shit that I could take off most of the time. Like I could go do stuff on the weekend with my friends because I put in the work during the week. Or may I put in the work in the last two weeks and now I can go to this event because I'm not stressing about work or homework. When I was trying to take it easy, I was stressed out all the time. In most cases, if you work hard, you can take it easy when it's needed. I'm not saying work hard to take life easy, but if you just put in the work and work hard as fuck, I'm telling y'all, when it comes time to rest, it feels like the best 
rest of your life. You know what I'm talking about. Imagine, let's say something you can uh, understand. Football. If you ever played football in high school, or if you're, or if you did cheerleading, or dance, or gymnastics, or volleyball, or something, anything, chess club, it doesn't matter. You remember that time when you go to football practice, or you go to practice every day, two days, and if you're in multiple sports, you got a sport in the morning, and you got a sport in the afternoon, and you got games on the weekends. You know the great feeling on that Sunday when there's no football for you. There's no games for you. And you can just sit back. You wake up on Sunday morning and you just feel relaxed. Right? Even better when the season is the off season and you don't have much going on. All your homework is, all your schoolwork is done. All that's done. Your sports are over. Then you can sit back and let your body just heal. And then when you come back that next semester or the next whatever, you feel ready to go again. The fire is right back in you because you put in a lot of hard ass work and then you got the adequate amount of time to rest. When you work hard, number one, it makes for you guys who hate your jobs and I get it. Especially if somebody if you're somebody who like works out a lot and you have a job that you just sit around and do nothing all day. Those are hard, like a like an office job. Those are killers. But if you're a person who works a job where you work out all the damn time, if you work out hard, it may make the job a little bit easier. Sometimes it doesn't. The heat's still going to kill you. But I'm saying if you work hard, it will make even your jobs easier. Here's another example. So when I was young, man, again, <laughs> I remember I told you guys, I told this story, but I want to go a little bit more in depth. Depth. When I used to go to work, I used to go to work early so I could learn how to um, sell properly, learn on the information, learn. I worked for these banks and I was I needed to learn how to give out money, how you got the money. Um, kind of like insurance, you know what I mean? Like if your house burns down, you don't, I'm going to teach y'all a little something. So when your house burns down or a tragedy happens, if your insurance company you have an insurance company, they most likely are not going to give you all the money up front. They're going to give you maybe 10%, 15%, 25%. And you have to use that money, get the house to a certain area. A house inspector will come out or an inspector from the insurance company will come out, inspect the place, say, hey, I believe this is 25% done. They will take that, take that inspection, give it back to your insurance company. Your insurance company will then go, okay, we see everything is good. Here's 50%. Here's another 25%. You get a 25% and then we'll give you more money, right? So what would happen sometimes is people would pay, get 25%, go find a contractor and this contractor would say, hey, how much money did you get? And you would say, I got X amount. And the contractor would make whatever they were doing, make it that amount. So you have to tell people, hey, do not tell them how much money you have. You ask them for a quote. And if you can afford it, do it. If you can't, don't. The best thing you can do is get a contractor who can do a great job. But if you can get a little bit under, do that. The last thing you want is a contractor to take all your money because the insurance company don't give a fuck. If you give all your money away to a contractor and he, and he or she dips, you will be out that money and the insurance company will not give you another dime. They expect you to be a grown ass adult, make grown ass decisions, but people fuck you over. Now, what, the reason I told all that is because in order for me to be the best individual I could to help these people with money, I had to know all that information. Not only did I have to know all that information, I had to know how money works. I had to know exactly how much you can get. What is your exact the top amount? I had to talk to other insurance companies and learn exactly what they're asking for. I had to go through all the inspections and say, hey, the reason you didn't get this is because you didn't fix this one stupid ass light bulb. And it would take me hours. Every day. And I became the best employee in that. Not, not bragging or anything, but I was the best employee in that. By far the best. Number one the entire time I worked there. Uh, because we had KPIs, if you know what that is. Um, and so, but I was so, I worked so hard to learn that shit. In training, outside of training, that the job became easy. 
That's how I was able to stay number one so long. Because I knew it like the back of my fucking hand. Anytime something new came up or a new policy came in, I knew it. Wasn't perfect, but I knew it. When you become a salesperson, let's say you're a salesperson. One of the reasons I was so good at my sales job when I did that is because I knew what I was selling. I knew exactly what I was talking about. There was nothing I didn't come across and say, well, um, I think you can get these channels or I think you can get this internet speed or I think you can get this phone or I think this. No. I knew these phones. I knew the internet. I knew the TVs. I knew everything inside and out. So any question I got hit with, I knew the answer like that. And, and you know, if you work in sales, you have your up and down time. You can have a great quarter and a horrible quarter. But you will still remain towards the top because you know so much. There's not a question that came by that you didn't already know. I would put in orders so fast that by the time they said yes, click, your the order is already done. I've already got them coming out to your house to hook up whatever it is. Or that phone is on the way. Because as soon as you get the yes, I'm already done. I don't have to go, hey, here's your price. Hold on, let me do this. Nope. See, that's like, all right, so here's your price and here's what you're going to be paying. I want to make sure you know this is what you're paying. Hey, one more time. This is what you will be paying a month. Okay, got it. All right, click. I'm out of there. I didn't want to be deceitful. I wanted to let them know what they were paying. But I want to make sure I had it ready to go. Because the second you hesitate, if you know anything about cold calling, the second you fuck up, you get... I'm saying all this shit to say this, guys. If you work hard, you're going to make money, baby. I was the best I was the best salesman, okay? I was in the top five every time. Not always the best. There were some people who were good, too. But I'm in that top five. And when I was doing insurance, top. Because the more you put into your craft, the better you get. <sighs> work hard, and it will come to you. Work hard, and this shit will be easy to you. And now I'm going to say something that negatively on me. And this is something I want to work on. I just said earlier, I got to work harder on other stuff. If I put myself in better physical shape, I'm, I'm not shitting you here. I'm not shitting. I'm just not shitting. If I was to put more time and effort into my working out and all that, which I've got to get better at now. But I'm telling you, and I, I believe this with my whole fucking mind. The views and the money will come with that too. I think my personality can get me money and get me views. Being in shape gets you more than that. Because if I come in here and I'm, sh I don't say I don't have to be necessarily chiseled. But if I come in here and I look good, even though I'm a manlet, if I come in here looking good and I just do this, boom, and I, I got them big old pythons just popping out, more people will be willing to even listen to more things I say. People will be more willing to listen to me because not only will I have the entertainment to be able to speak to you, I'll be able to show you the discipline too, right? Not only am I consistent in the videos or consistently live streaming when I'm not working, I can also consistently say, hey, what I'm saying is fucking true. You can see it. So work hard and that shit will be the easy part. You work hard working out. You work hard doing that. Looking good on camera will be the easy part. Just clicking on the camera and just going record or start streaming. That'll be the easy part. Be like, huh. If y'all ever watched a movie called The Devil's Advocate, when he's on the top of the rooftop and he's talking, he's talking. And then the part where he says, um, Keanu Reeves says, well, what about the money? And then Al, then Al Pacino, Al Pacino, he says, money. Now that's the easy part. That's what I love. That's what I want to say to myself when I hop on this camera with people are like, if should it ever happen for me and I'm making money off this, like really making money off this. And people are like, well, talk about the money part, Trey. And I'll be like, money, money on YouTube, money in live streaming, money doing whatever I'm doing. That's the easy part. 
That's the easiest part. Making money is the easiest part, baby. Once you put all the once you put all the blocks together, that's the easy part. I don't like this guy. Well, I'm not even gonna say his name because I don't like him. But <laughs> I was listening to these streamers and they were talking. And one of the things that came up was them talking about, man, people hate on us because we make money now. And for the most part, we just turn on the camera and talk. But that's the easy part now. They didn't see the five, six years of streaming that took for me to get here. The hours and hours, 10 plus hours of streaming every day to get me here. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about this streamer talking from their perspective. And they said they didn't see all that. They didn't see all the struggles. They didn't see all the grind. They said, now, now that the foundation's built and I know how to do this, making money is the easy part. It don't take nothing to make the money. The hard part now is, you know, checking the analytics, checking to make sure I'm fucking with these brand deals, making sure I'm getting my shit out on time. But the money part, that's the easy part, though. To y'all, it just looks like I'm just clicking a button and saying, stream. But nobody sees all the research and all the shit that goes on outside of that. This is the fall off time for a lot of guys. Get it back on track. 23 to 25, you should, whatever you fell off and did at 18 to 23, shake it off. But 25 clock starts. And 25 o'clock starts and you got to build that resume. The resume is your accomplishments. Show your work. It needs to be top of mind. You got to do whatever you do to keep it on top of your mind. Put it over your door. Play like a champion today. Whatever. Forget all this. Yeah, I, I screwed this chick. I got a hundred chicks. I got this. I got that. Look, man, less than 7% of your time needs to be talking about women. Shout out to Ramil Amir. I love that 7% number. Real movers and shakers, real builders of men. Yeah, we sit around in the executive washroom talking about women, talking about sex and all that. But we only do that for less than 10% of the time. The rest of the time, we talk about building stocks, bonds derivatives, whatever. We're talking about shit that ain't just them. They're there, but they're apart because we got other shit to talk about. And here's the thing. These guys are never single. Even the butt ugly ones. They, they ugly, but they look real good on paper. And they tend to have hot wives, hot girlfriends. You can be an ugly dude if you get if you look good where it counts. I love I I only want to deal with men like that. I only want to deal with men like that. I only want to holler at men like that. I only want to be around thorough dudes. I would rather be by myself than be around men that are cheap, timid, and lazy. I don't want that shit rubbing off on me. I grew up blue pill, beta male, single mother raised. I don't need any of that near me. Think of it like this. Think about you, you kicked alcohol or drugs. You don't need that shit nowhere near you, right? You need to be away from that stuff. I don't need to be, I don't need that timid, nothing. No, that's why I surround myself with hardworking dudes. When you see me give compliments, you see, I don't beef with people. I don't. And when you see me give a congratulations to somebody as a man, you'll see one thing. They tend to be hard workers documented. I respect work. I respect, I respect work. And I respect the man whose word is his bond work and silence. If you, if you remember my Instagram, you've heard me talk about these things before. Join my IG, the frat room. You'll get daily live streams that, that go away after I do them. I like what Instagram is doing right now. Even the IG lives don't even last. You have to make them, want to make them last. Sometimes I'll put them up and I'll delete them right after that. So you either catch them when you catch them or you don't. If you want to catch everything, join me on Patreon every Sun, every um, Monday at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time for a Patreon-only live stream. Tomorrow is going to be longer because we had to cancel last week's because of weather. So, all right. This is why men need a 100% mindset. Sounds good, don't it, ladies? Walter says, this credit score is 815. That's my dude right there. That's my dude right there. Walter came in and said, you got damn right. I know my credit score because I'm proud of it. That's why I said a man who knows his, uh, men with good credit scores know that stuff. Ladies, sounds good, right? 
Ladies are like, ooh, this is getting me excited. I'm moist. I'm tingling. 100% men. And I believe women should be hypergamous. Mm -hmm. Let's define it. Hypergamy. The action of marrying a person in a superior caste or class. Yep. Women should be hypergamous. FBI women should be. FBI women should be hypergamous. Feminine, beautiful, inspirational women should be hypergamous. Just like I don't deal with average men, I don't deal with average women. You got to be an above average woman to be hypergamous. You can't be hypergamous. Five foot four, 200 pounds. Two, to, two years of community college and a CNA. Get out of here. Hypergamy? Do you want to marry ladies? Do you want to marry or whatever you call a marriage, whether the state sponsored or not? You want an emotionally profound and significant long-term lifelong relationship? Do you want an LTR? Do you want to marry well? I.e. means you want to live in a neighborhood like I just kind of laid out? Or you want to live in a middle class or lower upper class kind of life. See, I was never a suburb kind of guy, but I do like downtown aloft living. That's me. I'm a city guy. Do you want that? Ladies, how many ladies want this thing? How many ladies want this? Ladies, how many ladies do you want this? Do you want to... Ladies, how many ladies want this? Ladies, do you want to be required to work in order to pay significant bills. Listen to the way I phrase that question. Ladies, do you want to be required to have to work in order to pay significant bills? I mean, work ain't optional for you. It's a requirement. When you're with a man, you still got to work to pay a significant bill and a significant bill is not a, a significant bill is along the lines of something like a car payment. Well, that ain't even a significant bill. A significant bill is like a mortgage or rent. Uh-huh. Yeah, significant bill. I'm not talking about variable stuff that you can cut off. You know, mobile phones, you can you can get a plan. No. I'm talking about a significant bill. I'm talking about several hundred or thousands of dollars a month. Who do, who wants to do that? Ladies? Ladies? Shout, come, on, come on, my college educated. Come on, my ski wees, my ooh whoops, my Z fives, my. How, what does Sigma Gamma Row do? No offense, Sigma Gamma Row. G Row. What do y'all do? Whatever y'all do. Do you want to be required to do this? Stacey on Toya Toya said rent in Anaheim makes her cry. It only makes you cry because you need you a hundred percent dude. Let me say this. If you think guys, I already said this earlier. And I know some men hate that I say this. I know it. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. But if you leave your girl around me, <laughs> I'm kidding. If you leave your girl around me, seriously, and they, if they ask me, should I be with him? And y'all aren't married? And y'all aren't engaged? If you're just a boyfriend, I got bad news for you. I'm going to tell her the truth. Don't, what, I'm going to ask her, what life do you want? Do you want to work the rest of your days? Okay, and she says no. I said, well, then you need to find out how much he makes, how much he plans to make, and if he's okay with taking care of you. And if he says no, move on. That's fine. Don't hate him for it. He's allowed to choose just like you're allowed to choose. But if, you, if you're fine with working and you want to work, then I won't say a thing. I'll let you keep on living. But see, I won't let, I won't, I'll tell a woman, hey, are you, are you a hypergamous or you want, I won't say hypergamous. Normally most people don't know what that means. 
But I'll say, do you want to work the rest of your life? Do you want a certain lifestyle? Do you want a rich man? Do you want a poor man? I mean, what do you want? And if a guy is dating this young woman, I'll be like, okay. If you want to be with this man and he's only a young man who's just getting started, but well, okay, just be willing to struggle with him until he gets it. I say, and I'll say, be willing to struggle with him until he gets it and don't bitch and don't complain. I don't want you to give it the man and he's working his ass off and you just say you're in love with him and, but you're mad that he doesn't make enough. But if that's, that's the case, then get with somebody else. Give it the man who's richer. But just like Kevin said, though, you're going to have to be in shape. And I tell women what I tell, I tell women what I would tell myself. I said, it would not be fair for me to say I want a beautiful ass woman and I'm fat and short. Okay, if I'm going to be short, I got to at least be in shape and I got to have some money. It's just ridiculous for me to ask for stuff and I know that I don't meet qualifications for an 8, 9, or 10. It's just goofy. So if you're going to want a man, and I'll say you want a man who's making real money, I don't whatever that means to you. But if you're talking about a two, $300,000 man, oh, you're going to have to look better than this. And you can, I'll tell a woman straight up, you don't look good enough for that. <laughs> you may get it. You may be one of the few. Maybe he falls in love and you get some stupid ass Cinderella shit. But you don't look good enough for that. But that's okay. You can still get a man who makes good money. You're just not going to get that dude. Or if you do get a man who makes that kind of money, he's going to be way older than you. Maybe it's 50s, 60s. And he on his way out, he just wants a little piece of thing. Maybe not on his way out, but he just wants a little, little thing. And you happen to be young. You know? So, I tell women the truth. And I know it's hard coming from a fat man lip. Okay? I get it. I know when I talk shit, nobody wants to hear it. I'm a fat man lip. But at the end of the day, I got no dog. I got no dog in this fight. I got no dog in this fight. I'm telling you what I know. Okay? I know wealthy men. I'm not necessarily friends with them because I'm not wealthy. But I know them. I know what kind of women they want. What they're going to go after. I'm just telling you. And I talk to other men as well. Not necessarily those wealthy men, but I talk to men who make decent. At the end of the day, man, when I make videos about women, it's never to put myself on some pedestal. It's one, one or two things. I've talked to a lot of men, and I've worked with a lot of women. A lot of women. And I hear how y'all talk. And I know that sometimes what a woman says, and I meet these women who talk a certain way, who are like, well, I want a man who does this and a man who does that. And they are alone. Nobody around. Single, alone, and unmarried. Because they can't get that shit. And when I see that over and over and over, and I see these women get into their 30s and 40s, and they still ain't got nobody. I'm just like, well... <laughs> Either your standards are too high. In most of the case, it is too high. Or whatever they're looking for just simply just flat out does not exist. More than likely, their standards are too high and they think they're worth more than they are. Especially women who are in the medical field. The women who are in the medical field, medical field women and school teachers for me, are the ones I see have a lot of problems. School teachers, because they work with so many people beneath them, including the kids, they work with custodians, they work with paraprofessionals, they work with tutors, they work with people who just come in and help them read or help them with math, just these other people. So these teachers get such a big-ass, fat-ass ego that they end up with nobody. You know, and this is more in the city, uh, in, in little small country towns, these women get somebody because they, they know it's it's, it's it's slim pickings. You know what I mean? And I don't mean slim pickings like the men ain't worth shit. I mean slim pickings like if you don't get a man, then you're going to be out here forever. They don't get lost in the whole FOMO, fear of missing out, like this whole opportunity shit. They know what it is. But in the big cities, oh, these women are arrogant as fuck. And they think they can just get a man because they're pretty. Or they think they can just get a man because... They got an education and they went to school to go get a master's and now they're a principal or something. It's like, man, that's just not enough. It's not enough. Or they're a nurse. And then they're like, oh, okay, you're a nurse. 
Men don't really give a fuck about that. They're not going to pick you because you're a nurse. See, that's what women y'all got to understand. Especially if you're going to be a high purpose woman. Going out here and getting this education, do all that shit if you want to. I ain't against it. I ain't against you lear- learning shit. Do it. But why don't you just get a man who can already afford that and then go do that shit anyway? And then if you have the education, cool. It'll make you feel it'll make you feel better when you look in the mirror, maybe. Okay, cool. But for you women who just, you get these damn degrees and you get all this shit and you think that somebody, some men cares about you because... I'm a PhD. They don't. They don't. Okay, the first thing a man is going to look at when he first meets you is that ass. That's the first thing he, he noticing. He don't care if you're the smartest nurse in there. If you're 300 pounds, he don't care. He looking at that booty. He looking at that body. And then he looking at that face. It's the first thing that attracts men. And then everything else starts to come with that. Men don't, just like women, men don't go for that whole personality bullshit. Just like women, when they swipe left, swipe right on these damn uh, apps, it looks first. A man is going to be thinking, man, but now if he's a religious man, that's a whole different story. He may not just be looking at your ass. He's still going to look to see if you're attractive, but he may not be thinking about getting you in bed that first night and then moving on past that. He's got to, most men are got, maybe not most men, I don't know just how, how you categorize it, but a lot of men, they got to get past the bedroom. They got to get it. They got to get it in somehow, some way. They got to get in there and make it splash. They got to do it. They got to make it splash, and then they can get to know you. And it doesn't mean who don't, okay? But looks is the first thing they're going to notice. So just get yourself there. Get yourself as far as you can. But most of y'all are going to work. It just is what it is. The economy is what it is. Most women are going to work. <laughs> most and most men should be okay with working. So if you're a woman and you don't want to work, you want to be hypergamous, you need to be two things. And I shut my <clears throat> I shut my face up. I, was, I don't know what I was gonna say. You can be a woman and work from home. I mean, work, be a housewife on fifty thousand dollars a year. It's possible. That's not a lot of money to go around. And you may be eating some oodles and noodles sometimes. But there'll be food in the fridge. The lights will be on. And you're going to drive maybe one minivan. And y'all might have to share a car. But you can do that. If you really want to be a housewife that bad, you can do it. But if you want to be a housewife and you got these unrealistic expectations, like you're going to be a housewife that gets to go on yachts. If you ain't an 8, 9, or 10, you need to go ahead and hang that dream up. because. You can live in fantasy land all you want and think you're going to get the winning lottery ticket when you're at five or at six. And if you do that shit, you're going to end up all alone because you think I'm a PhD. You're going to get your education because your looks don't match up. And then you have to go buy a doll <coughs> and die alone. All because you want a luxury lifestyle. Let it go, babe. Be hypergamous, but be smart too. Don't be stupid.